that you take in life to be the best, you've got to go in with that attitude from the beginning. A lot of times I've been in situations where it was just me and this other guy and he was doing a heck of a job and it just was that one more second of effort that enabled me to come out on top. Probably 90% of it is just attitude, what you want to accomplish and if you have the physical tools to do it then I don't see how you can not be successful. What a season Kevin McLean of Colorado State enjoyed, and what a season the Western Athletic Conference had in 1975. Hello, everybody. This is Keith Jackson bringing you highlights of the 1975 Western Athletic Conference football season. This past year saw the Western Athletic Conference reach several national milestones. The number two ranking by Arizona State in the final polls, the highest ever by a WAC member, and the number 13 showing by Arizona gave the league two top 20 teams. The Fiesta Bowl victory over Nebraska by the Sun Devils. The Fiestas and the WAC's most prestigious moment in the bowl's five-year history. Seven Western Athletic Conference athletes won first or second team All-America honors. Fourteen seniors from six of the eight WAC schools played in all-star games. Five from Arizona alone. And the Sun Devils' Frank Cush was named National Collegiate Coach of the Year by his peers. Quite a success story for the 14-year-old Western Athletic Conference. Western Athletic Conference Football 1975, brought to you by Frontier Airlines, the airline with over 150 jet departures every business day in the United States and Canada. Discover the new Frontier. The Colorado State University rebuilding program began paying dividends in 1975. The toughest schedule ever was met with a winning season, the best Ram showing in a decade. Quarterback Mark Driscoll and his wide receiver Dan O'Rourke led the Rams for a second straight season. Even though the passing game was not stressed as much as in 1974, it was still a most effective weapon. Driscoll concluded his CSU career with 12 total offense and passing records, while O'Rourke finished as the second best pass catcher in Ram history. Sophomore Ron Harris overcame early season injuries to put together five 100-yard games. With two seasons remaining, he may very well overcome Lawrence McCutcheon's CSU rushing record. Joining Harris, fullback Jim McKenzie, number 41. Defense was a major factor in 1975. Linebacker Steve Crum, number five, and all-conference nose guard Fred Paoli, number 53, were major contributors. Kicker Clark Kimball set an NCAA record with this sensational 63-yard field goal against Arizona, the longest ever kicked in major college football. Coach Sark Arslanian has the Rams headed in the right direction, obviously. The wax lone rookie coach in 1975 was Wyoming's Fred Akers. He accepted a tough challenge, but responded with a well-disciplined team, which overcame injury problems, showing steady improvement. Here's how Akers viewed his initial effort in cowboy country. I think that we can say now that we have come close to turning the corner and getting our program off the ground in Wyoming. I think that this year served as a stepping stone for the players to go on and better themselves and make Wyoming once again a power that could play with anyone in the country. Once he had it cranked up, it was almost impossible to stop Lawrence Gaines, a picture-perfect wishbone fullback. Gaines took a liking to the newly installed offense and finished with the second best season ever by a Wyoming running back. He averaged over five yards a carry with his bull-like charges. A key returnee for 1976 is halfback Robbie Wright, a fine open field runner, with a career total of 1,100 yards after two seasons at Wyoming. Senior quarterback Aaron Kyle won all conference honors and served as Cowboy co-captain. Brigham Young suffered a slow start on offense, and all hopes for a second straight Western Athletic Conference title fell with two early conference road losses. By game four, Coach Lavelle Edwards had a potent offense thanks to halfback Jeff Blank. Blank, number 30, became the first Cougar ever to top 2,000 career yards rushing before his senior year. 
He has his sights set on the BYU all-time record. He's less than 300 yards from it. Development of a passing attack came slowly, but by late in the New Mexico game, Gifford Nielsen, a Provo native, was put in at quarterback, and he responded by setting a wax season completion record, hitting on over 60% of his passes. The Cougars showed a fine defense led by four linebackers, number 34, Bill Jensen, number 59, Sid Smith, number 51, Clark Carlson, and number 50, Blake Murdoch. At Texas El Paso, the Miners were young and thin in their ranks. Coach Gil Bartosh built his offense around quarterback Bobby McKinley and tailback Robert Elliott. McKinley ran the option attack well, guiding a lineup which endured a tremendous number of injuries. McKinley was the total offense leader, directing a team which had only four seniors. One of McKinley's favorite targets, number 17, Flash Collins. The key man in UTEP's future is Robert Elliott. Sophomore tailback, started slow, but came on strong. Had the second best single season rushing performance in minor history. A perfect example of youth learning under fire. A situation which is ready to pay off in victories for Bartosh and his young team. Linebacker Hal Barnett and walk-on end Lucian Johnson key to defense, which comes back intact for 1976. The University of Arizona Wildcats just kept on winning and winning. The Wildcats ringleader for the third year was all-conference quarterback Bruce Hill. The WAX player of the year on offense made the country's fifth best yard producing team clicked with his fine running ability and his knack for scrambling. Well, Bruce was a great leader for us. Uh, he was the ideal quarterback in his ability to run and pass equally well. Of course, he holds most of the uh, total offense records for the university, and uh, I feel was the finest all-around quarterback uh, in the country last year. Number 18, T. Bell. Number 86, Scott Piper, were Hill's favorite targets. Tiny Dave Randolph led the ground troops at Arizona. The five foot eight inch junior slashed his way to a fine season, one of many strong runners at Arizona. The nation's second most productive passing game in 1975 was found at the University of New Mexico. The principals, Coach Bill Munt, quarterback Steve Meyer, and receiver Preston Denard. Meyer ranked second nationally in passing, broke all Lobo records during a short two-year career, and he led the Western Athletic Conference in total offense. He finished as the NCAA's third leading passer in collegiate history and played in three All-Star games. Denard was third nationally in receiving with 59 catches as a sophomore. Meyer's junior college and New Mexico teammate, number 88, Gil Stewart, was another top receiver with this kind of work. A young University of Utah team laid solid groundwork for the future and for Coach Tom Lovat. There will be experience at quarterback with Pat Degnan returning. The sophomore set four records and tied another in his first Ute campaign throwing to young receivers like Mike Corty, number 82. Randy Griffin, number 12. And Dick Graham, number 84. All three receivers are juniors, giving the Utah offense sound experience for 1976. When Steve Peake was sidelined with an injury, Frank Collins, number 24, took over as the main man on the ground. There were many unanswered questions in early September when Arizona State University took to the field. The major problem facing coach Frank Cush was at quarterback. Dennis Sproul and Fred Mortensen provided the solution. With Sproul throwing to Jefferson, and Mortensen hitting Larry Mucker, the passing game was in good hands. Cush went with whichever quarterback had the hot hand, and both men, plus Bruce Hardy, who eventually moved to tight end, contributed to victories. The young ASU offense loses only two starters off an undefeated team, which bounced back from a 7-5 season in 1974. Fast Freddie Williams provided ground power. The junior needs less than 1,000 yards in 1976 to become both the ASU and the WAC all-time rushing leader.
The Western Athletic Conference had seven athletes who won first or second team All-America honors. Heading the list, number 40, Arizona State cornerback Mike Haynes. He was named to five All-America first teams. Brigham Young's Brad Oates was a second team pick at offensive tackle, and 14 WAC seniors performed in All-Star games. The bulwark of the Colorado State defense was Kevin McLean, the senior linebacker, a first team pick on three squads, runner up on two others. Another punishing tackler was ASU linebacker Larry Gordon. He was selected to two All-America teams. Arizona defensive tackle Mike Dawson was another second team choice. Another Wildcat, T. Bell, was a versatile All-American. He was a fine receiver, ran with authority, and was a real threat returning kicks. He was named to two All-America teams, setting three school, one WAC, and one NCAA record. Bob Berg of New Mexico was the most accurate field goal kicker in NCAA history. A freshman walk-on, he kicked 41 of 56 career attempts, plus going 43 for 48 on extra points. Berg set or tied seven conference and six school records. The Western Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year, number 77, Arizona tackle Mike Dawson. While Dawson was protecting the trenches, the wax fine crew of aerial interceptors were very busy. Let's watch them beginning with UTEP's Lee Mitchell. Next, a look at New Mexico's Ron Wallace, number 20. Brigham Young's Dana Wilgar, number 42. Colorado State's Jerome Dove, number 48. The Rams' Keith King, number 31. The Wax interception leader, Mike Martinez of Arizona State. and Utah's Mike Pierce, number 47. The linebackers also got into the act. Arizona's Obra Irby knew what to do with the ball. As did Utah's John Huddleston. You want to see some outstanding interior linemen? Well, watch Utah's Ron Shirkus. ASU's Larry Gordon and Willie Scroggins. UTEP's number 87, Elroy Stoglin, and teammate number 74, Lotion Johnson. New Mexico's Robin Cole. Wyoming's Leon Broussard. And ASU's Randy Moore. Good safety men always like to hit, like Jerry Canapo of UTEP and BYU's Gary Shaw. But every defensive player's dream is to score a touchdown. Utah's junior nose guard, Kevin Harrison, enjoyed his moment of glory this way. There's an abundance of young talent in the Western Athletic Conference. Wyoming receiver John Arnold is one of them, and here's what his coach had to say. There was no way we could keep John Arnold out of our starting lineup. He was a talented sophomore who combined dedication and concentration with a fierce competitive spirit to become an outstanding split receiver. The youth movement was very evident at Wyoming. People like freshman quarterback Don Clayton. It's tough enough for a freshman to start on a collegiate football team, let alone the quarterback position. But that's what we asked Don Clayton to do, and he accepted the challenge in earnest. His ability and youthful determination have given us a very sound feeling for the future. Freshman Latrell Jones took to the option offense in a hurry. New Mexico freshman Keith Ellis, number 14, is another young player with an exciting future.
The Lobos' other freshman find was receiver Ray Cameron. Utah quarterback Pat Degnan has two years remaining. He will have two top receivers in number 12, Randy Griffin, and the man who led the whack in receptions until he suffered a broken hand, number 84, Dick Graham. Texas El Paso welcomes back freshman tackle Wayne Pritchard, number 72. And linebacker Mike Young, number 16. Colorado State returns receivers Ron Bunch, a sophomore. And freshman sensation Mark Bell, number 11. Bunch averaged 15 yards a catch, and Bell was good for a 26-yard average. Brigham Young had a young offense mature. Sophomores man both the quarterback and wide receiver spots. Gifford Nielsen gets two more years with number 15, Jeff Nielsen, and number 8, John Vanderwooden. Defending champion Brigham Young and fast-rising Colorado State met in a regionally televised game to open conference play. Cougar defensive end Stan Varner returned this interception to the CSU seven-yard line. Halfback Jeff Blank put BYU on the board first, early in the first quarter. The defense strikes again. This time, CSU linebacker Steve Crum rambles 28 yards with an interception to pull the Rams within one point at 7-6. Late in the second quarter, Cougar quarterback Mark Giles finds tight end Brian Billick for a touchdown, and BYU extends its lead. Ram linebacker Kevin McLean knocks the ball free. Keith King recovers on a key play in the ball game. Two plays later with BYU ahead in the fourth quarter. Jim McKenzie dives into the end zone and CSU upsets BYU 21 to 17. The Rams were now established as a major force in the WAC race. The attention shifted to preseason favorite Arizona. Unbeaten and knocking on the top 10 door when Bill Mont's Lobos went to Tucson on homecoming weekend. Arizona quarterback Bruce Hill set the tempo early. He finally gets the ball under control, starts to run. Then spots receiver T-Bell open for a 72-yard scoring play. But that was it for the Wildcats offense until the third quarter. Lobo quarterback Steve Myers struck with a five-yard touchdown pass to Gil Stewart to tie the score 7-7 early second quarter. Meyer was hot. Preston Hall puts New Mexico ahead with this catch. Preston Denard catches Meyer's third of four TD passes as New Mexico scores 28 unanswered points. A furious fourth quarter rally moves Arizona within three points with five minutes left. Meyer then called on freshman Mike Williams. He carried the ball nine consecutive times and put the game out of reach with this five-yard touchdown run with 55 seconds left. New Mexico and coach Bill Mott had a most satisfying afternoon. When the dust settled on the WAC race, Arizona State had edged past New Mexico and Wyoming to set up a classic battle against Arizona. The Devils needed a victory for a perfect season, the WAC title and the Fiesta Bowl berth. A Bruce Hill to Scott Piper pass put Arizona ahead 7-3 early in the second quarter. Hill was a threat every time he got the ball, running the option here for 20 yards. The option right nets a 10-yard touchdown, and the Wildcats are in command 14-3, knowing a win will put them in the Fiesta Bowl. But Arizona State does not go down easy. Halfback Freddie Williams races 28 yards on a draw late in the second quarter. Dennis Sproul finds John Jefferson on a diving touchdown catch at the halftime to make it 14 to 10. The same combination strikes in the third quarter for an ASU go-ahead score. Arizona comes right back with a long run by Dave Randolph off a swing pass from Hill. 
The 53-yard play puts the Wildcats ahead 17-14 as the third quarter ends. But the Sun Devils put together a drive early in the final quarter. Sproul sneaks over for the game-winning touchdown. The Devils regain the WAC title and head for a Fiesta Bowl showdown while the Wildcats must be content with a rather strong 9-2 season. The Fiesta was being proclaimed as potentially the best bowl matchup of the year. Big 8 power Nebraska against WAC champion Arizona State. The Cornhuskers rolled through 10 straight opponents before losing to Oklahoma to share the Big 8 conference title. ASU's Young Devils had been a surprise with 11 straight victories. Defense got ASU into the Fiesta Bowl, and defense provided the first break with Larry Gordon's interception. Nebraska was waiting for Freddie Williams, but Stan Robinson set up the game's first score with this nine-yard sweep. Danny Cush put ASU on the board first with a 27-yard field goal. The Devils begin to drive with a pair of sophomores at the control. Dennis Sproul connects twice with the game's most valuable player, John Jefferson. Their play this day largely responsible for ASU's move to the number two spot in the final national poll. Young Cush bangs home a 33-yarder at the half, and Nebraska's lead is cut to 1.76. A third quarter, ASU drive stall, but the Devil defense rose up again. Alex Stenzel and Rocky Matali pin the Huskers deep in their territory as the quarter ends. Dennis Brown left with an injury, but Fred Mortensen came off the bench to find Jefferson for a touchdown. Mortensen ties the score at 14-14, hitting Larry Mucker on a two-point conversion pass. And the Fiesta Bowl's most prestigious game is headed for an exciting conclusion. The Devils' defense continues to hold the Nebraska offense. Al Weekend dumps Terry Luck for a 10-yard loss. ASU takes over. Sproul returns to action and picks up 12 yards. And a few words of wisdom from the collegiate coach of the year. On third and seven, Sproul hits Jefferson to keep the drive alive. With just under five minutes remaining, Cush connects for a third time, a 29-yarder, to put Arizona State University on top 17 to 14. Nebraska races the clock, a race you seldom win. On third down, Luck hit Tony Davis, but a jarring tackle by John Harris knocks the ball free, and Rocky Matala recovers to clinch the win for Arizona State. The celebration was glorious after the win which proved the Western Athletic Conference can play football with anybody. I did not have any illusions about this ball club going undefeated. Of course, we never go into a game figuring to lose. But this was a remarkable team. For the most part, we didn't have super talent, but we made weekly progress and always seemed to do what we had to do to win. It never occurred to these youngsters that they may lose a game. I think Arizona State's win over Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl is a great boost to the conference. We play fine football, and I think you're going to see a continued rise of the Western Athletic Conference. I think that the Fiesta Bowl this year serves our conference very well. You know, respect can't be assigned. It has to be earned. And I want to congratulate Frank Cush and his fine staff for contributing to the Western Athletic Conference as a whole some respect throughout this country. 1975 Western Athletic Conference football highlights brought to you by Frontier Airlines, the airline that treats you to first-class legroom at coach prices on every jet. Discover the new Frontier.